Hi guys, so this is question number 10th of SQL 50 series from Lead Code. So here we have a table that shows the user activities for a factory website. And in this table we have four columns, machine ID. Machine ID represents the ID of the machine. Process ID, the process ID represents the ID of the process which is running on the machine with ID being machine ID. Activity type. Uh, represents the in category of type start and end. Timestamp re represents the current time in seconds. So let's understand this with the help of the input activity table. Here, this is the machine ID. This is the process ID. The activity type start and end. The start timestamp is nothing but the time at which the machine starts the process. And this is the end end activity type that means the uh, the machine that actually ends the process at this timestamp. So now here we have to write a query to find the average time each machine takes to complete a process. That means we, we need to find the average processing time for each particular machine. So our output should look like this. We should have machine ID and the processing time in our output. So, the processing time is nothing but the average time of each machine. So, here we will be using self-join concept because first we have to find the processing time for each process that requires calculating the difference between the start and end timestamp for the same process ID. Okay. And also we want to compare the start timestamp from one row with the end timestamp from the another row for the same process. So here we will be uh, joining the same table, uh, activity table. So let's consider table activity A1 for the start timestamp and table A2 for the end timestamp. So let's begin writing the query select from we will be having activity a1 we will be doing inner join the columns that we want to retrieve we will write them afterwards activity a2 we want to join it on machine id since we want uh, the entries both the entries for the same machine id so a1 dot machine id is equal to a2 dot machine id. Also, we want that both the entries should represent the same process. So we will be doing using end operation here that a1 dot process id should be equal to a2 dot process id one more thing to note that here is our a1 dot activity type should refer to start sorry should refer to start and our a2 dot activity type should refer to end. So now the columns that we have to retrieve here is machine id, machine id and the processing time. So in order to find the processing time we will just subtract the end timestamp with the start timestamp minus a1 dot timestamp also we want to find the average processing time so we have just used the average function here average keyword also we wanted to round it to three decimal places as we as we have been said that our processing time should be with the three decimal places. I am giving it as alias as processing time which is actually shown in our output. At the last we will 
we should be using group by function with the machine id column since machine id is a non aggregated column here so this is how our query should look like here we have created two virtual copies of the activity table a1 and a2 so that we can compare the data points within the same table the join condition ensures that we only compare the relevant entries here or uh, the machine id here the machine id this shows that both the entries should belong to the same machine here the process id ensures that both the entries should belong to the same process and here the activity type is equals to start this shows that the this uh, this row should represent the pros process that actually uh, has the start event similarly uh, the a2 dot activity type is equals to n represents that the process should uh, have the end status activity status and n and uh, at last we have just uh, retrieved whatever we want the processing time which we calculated it uh, from subtracting the end time stamp with the start time stamp and the relevant machine id and the last we just did the group by operation so let's run the query and see the output so finally we have got the output one more important thing to note that here is since we were given that the start time stamp will always be before the end time stamp for every machine id or process pair since we have not written this condition here but it's important to know that we should write this condition that our a1 dot time stamp should be less than a2 dot time stamp okay so if there are any data entry errors or some something like that uh in that case also we will get the correct answer so i hope the solution is helpful to you here we have got the machine id and the process id with the rounded to three decimal places so thank you guys